This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York City. See it right below us there. Uh, we're doing this in a very special, interesting way. There's Steve Kravitz, right? Hi, Steve. Hi, Alex. Hi, folks. Yes. Hi. How you? Oops. Let me turn that down. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. We're having trouble with sound again. See, here's what's happening. He's hearing me through the phone because he's not getting sound on his Zoom. Right. Which is, you know, par for the course here. I mean, I have no idea why. We've tried everything. And <laughs> it might be something in your computer, something that isn't turned on or something that isn't allowing you to get the volume, so... Because you can't. Well, I turned everything on. Yeah, you can't hear their test tone. No. You know, so that means there's something that you're not doing. It's not doing it on your end. Is this your computer? Yes. Hmm. And you know how to operate it, do you? Kinda. Because I'm used to people who have problems because they don't know what they're doing. And by the way, that echo, if you hear it, is that he's listening to me on the telephone. Right, right. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not in actual time. We're in delayed time. We're not in delayed time, but it's a little off, you know. So whenever, so. Uh, so how are you doing, Alex? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, this is. We're doing this on half Zoom today. Right. We got the picture, but he's not being able to hear the audio on his end. And we were trying everything, everything possible. And uh, every, every, he supposedly has volume coming out of his computer, but it's not this. He's not hearing it. You know, right? You probably should go back later and play with your computer and see if you can hear something off a website. You know. Oh, okay. Good. It, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now I can't hear you. Now I can hear you. Now you can hear me. Yep. Wow. What was it all about? What did you do? What did you do? I had the headphones plugged in. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we just spent what? How long? About 20 minutes trying to figure this thing out? Right. And I just had the headphones plugged in. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, I see. And that was cutting the speakers out. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, you, you you learn by your mistakes, don't you? Live and learn. Live and learn. Live and learn. Yeah. So uh, we solved that problem. Yes. It's an exciting. <laughs> at least it's an, it's something exciting was happening here. That's something, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Something different. Yeah. So uh, what's new? Nothing much. Still working. Still uh, hoping to get back to California. You say still hoping to get back to California. I haven't heard this come up. Yeah, I'd like to get back there. You'd like to move back there? Right. Yeah. Well, uh, why did you move back to, well, I mean, you probably like your hometown, right, of Worcester. In, right, that's where I grew up. Massachusetts. So I came home for family. Yeah. So. Like, like the other day I went out to lunch with my brothers. So that's great. Right. So, but you want to move back to California because you want to start having a career again. Right, I want to start acting. Well, yeah, there's, well, there aren't many acting jobs in Massachusetts, let me put it that way. No, there's none. There's little theater. <laughs> yeah. But that's not your idea of a good time. Your idea of a good time is doing a movie. That's right. Right? And I'll tell you, you, you got the look, you know, you got a character. Yeah. Well, go for it. Go for it. You know, but I hope to save enough money by the by the summer. Uh, how much is going to cost you to get out there? I don't know. I haven't figured it all all out yet. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm, if if you don't take the chance, you'll regret it. 
Right. You know, right. that you didn't, that you didn't try. Right. Uh, and, uh, and it's a nice thing to be able to try, you know, and if you fail, well, what's, what, what, what's the worst that can happen to you? Starvation. Okay. That's the worst that can happen to you. Well, well that and, and horrible diseases you can't cure because you don't have insurance and well, let's, oh, let's, God. Let, let's not get into all of that. Okay. Alex, for God's sakes, you got me dead and buried. Yeah. Well, I have a, a physical problem today. What don't you have, Alex? I have a physical problem every day. But I, you know what I love? What do you, when you eat chicken, what is the best part of the chicken? I'm not talking drumstick or breast or whatever. The skin. Bingo, right? Why? Because the skin has all the taste. Right. Right? You eat the skin? You love the skin, oh, yeah. right? I peel the skin off. Well, anytime I eat skin, the next day I've got the trots. But it's one of those things that I love so much, I'm willing to suffer the trots. <laughs> You're a sick man, Mr. Well, no, Bennett. And, and that's what I've got today. I mean, in the middle of this, I may have to put us on pause and run off to the bathroom. But it was it was great. I, 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 the skin was terrific. But I knew. And Marjorie goes, "Don't eat it." She tries to steal it away from me. Don't eat that. You know what it right. does to you. You know. And I'm going, "Leave me alone." You know, I'll right. eat what I want to eat. And then I, some days I don't get the trots, but to, today I got them. And she's, you know, she's giving me the, the wifely. I told you so. Yeah. That's her job. That's her job exactly. So you know, it, it's uh, um, 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 you know that's my problem for today. So, and yours was the earphone in the plug, and whatever. But anyway, so you think you're going back to California, maybe to do some acting or to try and get right. acting? How do you start? How do you start on something like that? You know, I mean, you go back, and what do you do? You gotta get an agent. Well, I got a manager back there still. Oh really? Well, yeah, that's that's good. You know. And he said he'd get me an agent. So so that's what's waiting for you out there. Right, right. So you would have your your manager. Right. And then he would get you an agent. And then, right. And then you go off to auditions. Right. Exactly. You know, uh, and uh, uh, that's good. And you you know you've got a character. You got to you know you. You can play character roles very well. You got oh, the yeah. you got the voice for it. It's you know your voice is very character driven. Is that right? You no, know, it sounds you you have a characteristic voice. Okay. I th I think that if people saw you in a film, they'd remember your voice. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at who should be your agent. Anyway, uh, no, but, it should be my agent. No, but I, I, I wouldn't do. You know why I wouldn't do that? I would hate to be a manager or an agent, because I'm responsible for someone else's career. Right. And if I fail at doing what I'm doing, then he doesn't get work, and I've been a failure as a manager. And I don't think I would be a very good manager. Well, the idea is, as a manager is to get your client in the position to get work, not necessarily to get them work. They have to get the work on their own. Oh, that, that's true, but you have to put them in the seat in the audition for them to right. be able, you know, and I'd have to be able to get you an audition. Right. And, and I don't even know how to get on the phone and deal with these people, you know? A professional knows how to. Hey, I got a right. kid, I got a kid for you, you're gonna like him, just listen to him, just give him a chance, okay? I'll, right. I'll send him right over, you know? Right. And you get yourself a good enough manager and who's well connected and he can get you tons of auditions just because of who he is. That's right. In my case, I'm afraid to just call people. You know? So it, it I wouldn't I'd make a terrible manager and I would not want to be responsible for your career. You wouldn't want to do cold calls. I, I oh God, cold calls. The cold calls were the bane of my existence. When I first started out in broadcasting, I go to a radio station and say, "You want to do some selling for us? You know, at these small little stations. You want to sell time for us?" And 
I go, no, not really. Well, give it a try. And then I would have to make cold calls. You walk into a store and say, hi, I'm Alex Bennett, and I'm from KTIM in San Rafael, and uh, uh, how would you like to buy some time? I, right. I couldn't do it. I was petrified. You know, so cold calling is not my uh, my forte. My forte. No, not not even close to my forte. So, you know, I but I, you know, being responsible for somebody else's career, I think is. Uh, I I know that some agents just don't give a shit. They just get you the work, and if you don't get the work, well, that's the way it is. I would feel right. terrible. If I, you know, if I couldn't get you auditions and things like that, I would just, right. you know, and your career was languishing because I couldn't do anything. Right. So I'd rather you deal with, you know, some guy like Harvey Weinstein and get the work. <laughs> <laughs> nice example, Harvey Weinstein. Well, let, let's talk about Harvey Weinstein for a moment. You know, there, there are about... A dozen actresses in Hollywood, whether they blew him or not, who have their careers because of Harvey Weinstein. Gwyneth Paltrow would be nothing today without Harvey Weinstein. Nothing. Well, she's nothing. Is that now. right? I think she's kind of nothing now. But, you know, yeah. I mean, he put her in Shakespeare in Love, and then he goes out and he pushes the movie, and he pushes her, and then he puts ads in the in the journal saying best best actress Gwyneth Paltrow, and so he, through his force of will, got her nominated, and he finally got her the Oscar. Well, what do you want? You know, what's right, better? There you go. What's better than that? Now, Harvey Weinstein may have been a just a creepy human being, horrible person horrible person he's been doing this for years listen i sat up in san francisco and in the early years i knew what harvey weinstein was about i knew about the casting couch and i was wasn't right i wasn't even in hollywood it was like one of these you know open open secrets that everybody knew right 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 you, you right know, uh well i got to go up and audition for harvey in his room and they go don't go everybody knew and that was for years and years and years. And I, uh, the people, I, I don't blame Harvey because Harvey is just a horrible person and he can't help himself. But I do say, what about all you people who didn't say anything all those years? Right. There, there was even a joke at one Oscar, or maybe it was a Golden Globes, and maybe it was even Ricky Gervais, who made a joke about this and about Weinstein and him fucking women. You know, he made a big joke about it. And it was it was just so open in Hollywood and nobody did anything about it. And all of a sudden one day it's, oh, Harvey Weinstein's been doing this all these years. Well, they could have stopped him years ago. Right, right, right. But they didn't. And Much they, like the priests. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Much and, like the priests. They could have stopped them years and years ago. You know, I mean, what, what Weinstein did was abominable, but... Uh, there's another part of him that couldn't help himself. Well, if people had blown the whistle on him early, he could have helped himself. Right. You know? And so I say that uh, for all the... You know, I, I get really mad when I see people who were in Weinstein films and made money off of Weinstein suddenly saying, oh, how horrible it was and blah, 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 you know? Well, you know, you knew. You were told by friends, don't go up to his room. Right, right. You know, and and I blame those people too. They're responsible, but and nobody wants responsibility for this. So they go and they nail Weinstein, and you know, of course, he's in jail. You know, and he as well he should be. Anybody who acts with that kind of behavior should be. But right, he could have been stopped, and and uh, it's been it was going on for years. Yeah, Cosby was going on for years. They knew about him drugging women. This was 20 years ago. Cosby then wants to go back on the road yeah, as a stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, maybe a sit-down. He can't really walk that well. But, right. But the point I'm making is, you know, I mean, uh, these people did terrible things, but they could have been stopped earlier. And nobody did it because it wasn't trendy. It wasn't fashionable. 
And since when did being a decent human being and not putting people in uncomfortable positions uh, suddenly become something that has to be fashionable? That you're gonna right. you're gonna go get the guy on it, you know? I mean, all of a sudden, nobody complained about Harvey Weinstein for years, and this was going on for years. Some of these women are saying, 20 years ago, I was in, you know. All of a sudden, all the women come forward, all at once. Well, maybe it's because one of them got brave enough to do it, and the rest said, I think I can do it too. But I'm just saying, you know, there's a certain part of you that knows that, you know, you can just turn around and go, fuck you, I'm walking out of the room. Right. And he was a man of power, and yes, I agree that because of that power, they felt afraid to do that. But you you have a somewhat of a responsibility over your own fate, too. Right, but uh, they, he could make or break their careers. Yeah. You know, and how many of the women who are now complaining about that they had to blow him or something like that, at the time, had to make that decision and uh, made the decision, well, I'll get a part if I blow Harvey. You know? And sometimes they got the part. Other times they didn't. You know? Right. Those are the ones that are pissed off. Well, you know, Paltrow's come down on him. Uh, and he, she owes him for what paltry career Paltrow had. You know? Right. Um, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not sitting here defending Harvey on any level. What I'm doing is I'm going after the people who did nothing about him all those years. Right. You know, and all the women who had to suffer his indignity because they didn't speak up, because they didn't say, hey, this is wrong. Because, you know, certain people should have said, I don't want to do business with that man because of what he does to women. That's right. You know, and yet they did business with him. He was the most successful producer in Hollywood. You know, so I had a lot of power. Had a lot of power. A lot of power. And you don't get that kind of power unless people allow you to have it. You know what I'm saying? That makes right. sense. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so uh, uh, but you know, go out there, and make sure you don't have to blow Harvey Weinstein. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> to you. I would be very disappointed if you did. You know? Yeah, so would I. Uh, but you know, I think you, I think you really do miss acting. Yeah, I do. You know, and that. It's something that I've gone back and I've watched some of your stuff that I didn't watch, you know, simply because I wanted to see what my friend did all those years. Because when I looked, it was funny. The other day when we were talking here about what movies you would, I went to IMDb, and I didn't realize how much you have on IMDb. Right. I mean, you, you know, I knew you from, you know, the Clint Eastwood film and a few other things that you did here and there. But at a certain point, you went down to Hollywood, and I wasn't paying as much attention. Right. Right? And uh, I said, wow, you know, he really, when I looked at it, he really had quite a career. And there's no reason why you can't use that career and go back and make a second career for yourself. It's time. Right. It's time. Right. You know? It's time for you to do it. Uh, you, you're not you. What you is, you're the ripe age for a comeback. Right. You know, all of a sudden, there's these people you don't hear of for years. They just disappear from view, and it's because they're still making movies, but nobody cares. Also, at some point, they might have changed agents, and so they're not getting the same parts they used to get. All right, changing an agent can change everything. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, it, 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 the, the comeback, i tell you a big comeback right now, Brendan Fraser. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, he, for, the, for many years, uh, just kind of disappeared from view. He also gained a lot of weight, which he's, he since looks like he's lost a lot of it. But just recently, they put him in a film that Darren Aronofsky did called The Whale, in which he plays a man who's 700 pounds and you know can't leave the house and is sedentary. And I haven't seen the film, but I hear he's really terrific in it. And he, they say he's going to get nominated for an Academy Award and probably will win it. Oh, wow. You know, so when you talk about comebacks, that's a perfect example of the comeback. Right, no kidding. Yeah. Um, the question, I suppose, is 
were you out of the business because you wanted to be out of the business or were you out of the business because of your problems? And your problems now are like 15 years ago, right? Right. You know, you're clean. When you go into a person's office and they say, why haven't you been working all these years? You say, well, you know, back then I had a drug thing, you know? But right. that was 15 years ago and I'm still sober. They're gonna, they're gonna relate to that, you know? If, if that question comes up, don't volunteer it. Right, right. But, but nobody's going to fault you because you were a drug addict and then all of a sudden 15 years ago you decided to clean up, <coughs> you know, but then the work wasn't there. 17 years ago. 17 years ago. The other thing that you should do, think of is the fact that in those years you have matured. So you have a look. Right. You know? I'm trying to think, there's an actor you look like. I don't think they'll ever compare you to him. I'm trying to remember his name now. My mind is like, Totoro, John Totoro. Oh, really? You kind of look like John Totoro. You know, yeah, or you are a, when they say, get me a John Totoro type, you would probably be the first guy they would cast. Right, right. See? So that, there, there you go, you know. So I'd be happy with that. Well, it's for five stages of show business. Who's Alex Bennett? Uh, hire Alex Bennett. Uh, yes, we got to get Alex Bennett. Get me an Alex Bennett type. Who's Alex Bennett? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so those are the five stages of show business, you know. Although I got recognized at Lowe's as being a stand-up comic from a customer. Really? He said, didn't you do stand-up? What do you mean, when you were on, on in California? On, uh, yeah, on TV and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, and you said? I said, yeah. And he said, then the next question was, what are you doing? What are you doing now? here? <laughs> what are you doing at Lowe's? Oh, boy. Yeah, I have a friend who is a real left winger, who works at uh, who's your competitor to Lowe's? Home Depot. Home Depot. And the other day you told me that Home Depot is right wing, right, and Lowe's is left wing. That's right. And he is a very left wing guy. And I forgot to tell him I heard that your company that you work for uh, is a right wing company. How do? Do they suddenly make an announcement, hey, we're right wing, we're left wing? No, I think it has to do with their practices. As a company? Right. The practices like what? What would you work at Lowe's? What do they do that's left wing? They hire all types in, 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 uh, of people from gay to purple hair to you name it. Yeah. Yeah, so you know they yeah. they hire all all, all types and yeah. all ages. But but uh, but on the other hand, Home Depot won't. I don't know. Oh. I'm not that familiar with Home Depot. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nice. It's nice that they hire people who want to express themselves. Right. You know, and um, you know, it sounds like you don't hate the job. No, I don't. I don't hate it. I don't love it. No, it's not. It's nothing that challenges you. No. You know, I have guys here working on this building. They're out on these, uh, you know, the scaffoldings that go up and down. I don't know what they call them, planks or whatever. And they work all day clearing out the cement between the bricks and then putting in new cement. They're this, not done yet? No. They do the whole side of a building. They do another side of the building. They do another side of the building. And I'm thinking... I don't care how much that pays. You could never get me to do that. Well, I'm afraid of heights, so there's no <laughs> way you can get oh, me, me to too. do that. Me too. I could never do that. I go, how do those guys go up there? You know? Right. And they just hang around up there. So I, I don't understand it. How many stories is your building? Eight. So That's they, pretty so high up. They got to do eight floors, half of the building. Then the other floor, eight floors on the side of the building, there are four sides in the courtyard. 
there are four sides on the uh, outside. So they've been doing this. It's been going on for two, three years now. Scaffolding, I know, has been up for at least three years. So anyway, hey, listen, it looks like we ran out of time. You know? Are you kidding me? Yeah, when well, we're having fun, what the hell, you know? But uh, if you if you're up for it, we'll see you again next week, right? Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. That's Stephen Kravitz, who may be back in movies, and then I can say I know a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later, Steve. Bye, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our good friend Stephen Kravitz, and uh, <laughs> it's funny. I, here, here's, here's what I do, I, I, and I shouldn't do it, okay? I mentioned this, I think, yesterday. Then I, um, I um, um, uh, love chicken skin. When I have chicken, I like the skin because I think the skin is the most delicious part of the chicken because it has the most savory taste of any part of the chicken, okay? So I sit there and I got to have a piece of... Uh, but the next day, I get the worst case of trots that you can possibly even imagine. And uh, uh, yesterday, when I did this thing with... With Steve, I said, you want to do another one? Because usually we do two at a time. And he said, sure. And I started doing it, and then halfway through, my stomach all of a sudden went, Brrr. and I had to cancel the second interview. So we're doing another one next week. But, oh, man, I felt so bad about it. I said, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go. And then I came back. I said, I don't think I can continue this because I'm just, you know. So it's me and chicken skin. I love chi I love me chicken skin. You know, I, I try to figure out, is it is it worth getting the trots and, and eating the chicken skin? Because it, the chicken skin is something that I love, but it comes back to bite me in the in the tushy. Oh, boy. it was So so then I take the Imodium, right? So I figured out a new way I'm going to do it is like for Thanksgiving when we do turkey. I love turkey skin. Oh, that's the best, okay. So what we'll do is uh, we'll baste it with Imodium. <laughs> so I get some little liquid Imodium, and we'll baste it, and that'll, uh, that'll keep me from getting the trots. Is that, does that make any kind of sense at all? No, of course not. Anyway, we got some people waiting to come on here. Why, I would have no idea at all, but there they are. There's, uh, there's Jeff, and there's Charlie, and there's Brian, and they're all coming on. Wait a minute. Where's how, now? Wait a minute. How did how did how did Brian turn his camera on and he's not there? <laughs> Do you have an answer to that one for me? You know, it doesn't. I didn't. I mean, I automatically admitted them. Well, wait a minute. But don't you then have to click something to go in? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, that's the reason why. Well, let's just wait for Brian. Okay. <laughs> this is fun. Hmm? Oh, this yeah. is getting fun. Well, while we're waiting for for Brian, we'll just let Alan come in as well. Uh, let's see here. Here's Alan. We're we're waiting for Brian. In case you're wondering, Alan. Nice. Oh, <laughs> no no Did you hear that Jack had problems again last night? What? Did you hear that Jack had problems with his show again last night? When Jack has trouble with his show, I'm the first one to hear about it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, myself, and Phil Meyer tried to get in and... Could not. Ring and ring and ring. Well, that wasn't the problem. The problem was he couldn't get the show going out over the, you know, the uh, 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 encoder, as it were. Oh, yeah, okay. it's just you on on on. What's it called? YouTube. Yeah. So I so I I I worked with him last night and we couldn't get it solved. So hey, the, but we got it can, so, we got it solved today. You can start the show. I'm here. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We're <laughs> we're we're waiting for you. And Charlie said, but you didn't he didn't hear him. Uh, you're, it's only you on YouTube. It's only mm -hmm. me on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's so now leave. they didn't they didn't even get to see my grand entrance. Let's leave yeah. it that way. Maybe I'll do it again. Okay, there <laughs> we are. 
Uh, no, I'm sorry, folks. I, did, I I occasionally I do that, and the problem is because I look at the screen here and I see all you guys, and I'm not paying attention to what's going on over the over the uh, internet. And I uh, uh, today I was thinking about that. I was thinking about the same problem that I have every now and then of not putting you guys on. I'm going. I'm never going to do that again. I'm going to pay attention to it up here. No, nah. didn't. So you know. I may have to change the way I've got this stuff apportioned on my screen or something. I, don't know. I have my pillow oh, here. Why do you have your pillow there? Pinch nerve. Pinch nerve for like two oh, weeks. Oh, oh that's the bone. worst. That's the yeah, worst. Nerves, nerves are a different level than any sore bone, any hurt arm, whatever. Yeah. I Many years ago when I was working at Live 105, I pinched my nerve in my neck right back here. Is it like back here somewhere? Yeah, 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 exactly. All the way down. To I the mean, oh. it was excruciating. Yep. Okay. So immediately, my uh, my business manager gets me to a, a doctor who can you know manipulate it and stuff, and he gives me this stimulation thing and all of that, you know. And I've I've got to go to to um, uh, uh, Toronto. Oh no, for to Montreal to Montreal for the Montreal Co uh, Comedy Festival. Mm. And I don't know how I'm going to go, but he gets me fixed up enough that I can go. But then he also gives me real good painkillers. Okay. <laughs> real good painkillers. <laughs> so now I'm in, I'm in Montreal and I'm doing the radio show. And then as soon as I'm through with the radio show, I immediately go back to the hotel. And I spend the rest of the day there only to come back the next day and do the show again, only to go back to the hotel room and lie down. And even lying on your back doesn't solve it in most cases. Taking the drugs did. It helped a great deal, okay? So now I'm doing my show a couple of months later. I've got some comedian. I can't remember who it was. He says, uh, 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 by the way, you were, I really enjoyed being up there in Montreal with you on your show. <laughs> and I looked at him and I went, you were on my show? I didn't remember any of it. The only thing I remembered is what I could hear on recordings of the show. Mm. Because I was just so looped. I mean, I had to have the painkillers. Yeah. It was ter it's terrible. That's the worst thing can happen is a pinch nerve. It's, yeah. it's just an unrelenting pain. You know. What did they give you for it, Brian? Just some, uh, some painkiller stuff. It's uh, like a, a leave, but it's like twice as strong. So, yeah. Mark? They, they asked me if I wanted to do therapy. They asked me all this other stuff, and I said, no, just give me the pain stuff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, hot and cold up there tends to yeah. that area, yeah. too. I don't know if that's what he had me do. You know, he just had me take the goddamn pills, you know, and then I went back and got some more therapy, mm -hmm. and eventually it went away. But yeah. I mean, while it existed, I mean, there was no way I could lie in bed without it hurting. Yeah, yeah that's the second time in that first mm -hmm. week. Is it going the second week? The first week, mm -hmm. yeah, I couldn't sleep. can't sleep on it. Can't sleep with uh, on the other side because then this thing is like up there and all the nerves are hitting. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, it's really horrible. So, yeah, yeah that's what we talk about on this show now. It's just old people's stuff, you know. Uh, how you doing, Jeff? Jeff's in pretty good shape, though. I mean... For a guy who had a stroke about 15 years ago, he's uh, he's doing okay, right? Right, Jeff? Jeff, are you alive? He's, to, he's, he's muted. muted. Can no. you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, You're muted. <laughs> You're is muted. he muted? Oh, okay. Yeah. He's muted. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting stuff. But I, I could get it off. There were some noisy people around there that I oh, had to put in room. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm alive. Thank you, guys. Now, are you in uh, Connecticut? Or you, you have got to be, yeah. right? Because you're right coming, now I'm in Connecticut. Yes, I am. Because you're coming down to visit us on Tuesday. That's right. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Good to, well, you, you got to find me a good uh, Chinese restaurant. A good Chinese restaurant? Ask Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's no good Chinese restaurant where I live. Well, it's not, you know... I don't know. Is Chinese food that good? Or is it highly overrated? I mean, why do we buy it? Because there are so. Because it was probably the best food for takeout. Yeah. You know, 
I mean, it travels well in takeout. Uh, whereas if you order a steak, I'm sorry, you just don't get a steak. Uh, by the time it gets to you, it's fully cooked. You know, it's, you know, really. No, because what happens is you cook a steak and then you put it in a thing to send it over. And while it's there, it keeps cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So by the time it gets to you, there's no such thing as a rare steak. So you can't do that. But Chinese food, that stuff, you can eat it a week later and it's still okay. You know, <laughs> but it's not the greatest food in the world, you know. Uh, but uh, so, All right. yeah, I'll I'll be flexible. Yeah, you be flexible. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> um, yeah I, I I'm glad that you're coming because then I'll have a chance to go outdoors. Yeah, I haven't been out in a week. It's been <laughs> well, it's been raining and it's been this and it's been that, and I just went out of hell with it, you know. Yeah, we were out all day. Really? And it was horrible. From rain, cold. Well, was, uh, tonight, before I came on the air here, we had lightning and thunder. Oh, nice. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It was it was rumbling real hard, you know. Yeah. So, We had a total of nine storms this last month that went through. Nice. Nine, nine storms? Nine storms, yeah. yeah. Finally, last one was uh, a couple days ago. Last night was like really light sprinkle, but now it's like but sunny. That has nothing to do with global warming, right? Not sunny for ten days. <laughs> yeah, that has nothing to do with global warming. You know, I, I mm. hate, hate these people who don't understand that is exactly what global warming is. Yeah. You know, they say, "Well, gee, we had a really hot summer." Yeah, that's what global warming is. You know, when any you know, global warming affects all kinds of of things. You know, mm. all the fires you've had out there, global warming. Mm. Then followed by rain, followed by mudslides. Well, the mudslides aren't global warming. They are the culmination of global warming. Mm. So, you know. But anyway, can we see faces? Oh, that, that was before. Let's see. Good evening, gentlemen, says Benita. Who's Benita? Oh, Benita's from uh, Livermore. Oh, really? Yeah, she's been on there lately. Yeah, you you look at the... Uh, at the uh, what do we call it? The uh, chat that, room. The chat room. Yeah, Char Charlie and I keep yeah. everybody in line in yeah. the chat. I wish I could do the show and pay attention to the chat room at the same time, <laughs> but I can't. You know. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. I don't think the chat is red. It is red, but only in Anchorage. What? <laughs> the waiting room. Don't. See the movie Babylon. It's horrible. Oh, we, uh, uh, hey, who said that? Uh, John Redshaw. Thank you, John, because we just got through about five hours ago watching Babylon. Because it was one of the films I got uh, as a screener for my SAG Awards voting. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it is a horrible movie. Really? Just <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. My kind of movie. It has about... <laughs> A 20-minute segment that isn't half bad. And then it gets bad again. Plus, the guy had no idea what really went on in Hollywood. He had everything wrong. You know. So, it, 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 it's a terrible movie. However, I told you last night, didn't I, that I saw The Whale. We watched The Whale. Mm. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a good movie. It's a very good movie. I mean, it, 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 the performance by, uh, yeah. what's his Brendan name, Fraser. Brendan Fraser, uh, is maybe better than the movie as a whole, okay? Mm -hmm. But it is still a very good movie, and his performance, I, as I said last night, uh, we may as well not hold the Academy Awards, just give it to him, <laughs> you know? He was that good. Uh, and not because he played a 700-pound guy, but because there was so, so much nuance and stuff to his performance. It was really terrific. Um, what yeah. other movies did you see from your... Uh, from your uh, well, that's all we've watched. So, oh, we watched The Last Hour of Avatar. Oh. <laughs> Another waste of my time. <laughs> You know, you don't have too many hours left, you know? Jeez, why are you sucking up with all these Do you have movies? to remind me of that? 
you know. I thought that one, uh, the one uh, everywhere, uh, everyone, all at once, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that one? Yeah, I saw it a long time ago, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, it's Marjorie crazy. didn't particularly care for it. I, I liked it. You know, yeah, I'm gonna like go. It. I'm gonna go watch it again because it, it's so layered. Yeah. That you really, and once you know what it's about, you go back and watch it. Maybe you'll understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I uh, agree. But and it, it's it's uh, it's a pretty heavy contender for an Academy Award. You know. Yeah, they won. Uh, she won the the Best Actress and then Best Supporting Actor, and then I think Jamie Lee Curtis was nominated, right? Yeah, I was so happy to see Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, get some recognition for this because she's been one of my favorite actresses over the years. Mm-hmm. I remember Maybe. when I used to watch her in uh, 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 Chinese films, mm-hmm. Asian films, where she was the female Jackie Chan. She did all her own stunts mm-hmm. and everything. She was incredible. Yeah. And yet now, you know, instead of just being a person who does stunts, she's also being lauded for being a great actress. And I, I think that's wonderful. I'm so happy about that. Yeah. I think that the actor also was. He was a stunt coordinator or something like that, too. Who? Uh, the the gentleman who won the best supporting actor. Yeah, they they just showed him in a clip doing some stunt instruction stuff. So really, what what yeah. film? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You're I don't ta- know. You're I'll, talking about I'll, everywhere, everything at once, all at once thing. Yeah, yeah. The guy who won the best supporting actor. Well, the guy who who was played her husband. You know who yeah. that was. No. Do you remember Short Round from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah the boy. Yeah, that was the boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he talked about that in his speech. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, wonderful to see him get a comeback like that. It only took him how many years to make another movie? Or He made one more movie. He made The Goonies. Oh. Uh-huh. And that was it, you know. So... Anyway, you know, it's some some so we've got a whole bunch of films. So Marjorie wants to watch Women Talking, which is supposedly very good. And uh, there's one other film that we want to watch. We want to watch this British film. Uh, what's it called? Uh, with uh, with Bill Nighy, um, and it's supposedly very good. So we got a bunch of them to watch. A lot of times when we get them now, we've already seen them because they've been on Netflix or whatever. You know, and uh, they aren't they aren't up for TV show. They're up for movie. Mm. So you know, but we watched. I watched the uh, uh, the Banshees of Insurin, which is very good. You know, yeah. wonderful film. So you know, I've been some with some good movies this year. Some pretty good stuff. You know. So anyway. So anybody have anything they want to talk about? Come on, Charlie, start the conversation. <laughs> What, what do you want to talk about, well, Charlie, Charlie? What about the, the 60 Minutes? Did you watch the 60 Minutes? <clears throat> the one about the nuclear fusion? Yeah, yeah. What did you think mm-hmm. about that? Oh, I thought it was very interesting. No, you mean about the, uh, the, 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 what, the tip of this thing? It, it's like yeah. it, hotter and brighter than the sun? Yeah, the first time they ever got more energy out from nuclear fusion than, it, than they put in. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, this may be the uh, chance for a new kind of energy, right? I mean, it, yeah, and the way it, they're doing it with lasers, it doesn't have any kind of radioactive waste fallout, right? nothing like that. Yeah. But we're still a long way away from it being a source of power, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's a beginning. Is This is not what we used to refer to as the holy grail of cold fusion, is it? No, it's not cold at all. It's over 20 million degrees yeah. where, when the laser hits. No, Now, what was cold fusion? That was supposed to be fusion taking place at room temperature, basically. Yeah, but they, mm-hmm. they, they, it never happened, did it? No, that was a hoax or, or whatever when, when, they, when they were claiming that. Yeah, but now, now, ago, explain right? to people what this, this is that we saw in 60 Minutes. It's basically, they're creating fusion, right? Creating yeah, fish. they have a little pod, a little tiny pod filled with hydrogen, and they blast it with this incredibly powerful laser. It's like, actually, there's more than one laser. There's a bunch of lasers, and they're all, like, longer than a football field, and they they charge, and they uh, blast it so quickly and, and so intensely that the temperature gets raised to over 20 million degrees, and, oh. and the hydrogen atoms fuse. Well, 
That's the thing. That's I, the, uh, yeah, what? See, the best part is that there's no way it can melt down because you turn off the laser and, and it's, it's off immediately. It's not like nuclear fission mm -hmm. where the thing is heated and it keeps giving off heat for weeks or months. In other words, you just click the switch and it's off. And the lasers are off and the power, and the, and the power shuts down. So there's no way it can melt down. <laughs> what if you keep yeah. it on, on too long, though? Like you don't turn it well, off. You, ha you would have uh, sensors and stuff. You would detect whether or not something bad was happening, and you would have shut off switches, and it would shut off immediately. Shut off the lasers, right? Right. Well, what's the worst kind of accident that could happen with this? Or couldn't an accident happen with this? Is that what it's good about for? Well, I mean, uh, it's harder to see how you could have an accident with it. But, I mean, I suppose something could happen to redirect the laser someplace that's not supposed to go and, and cause some damage. But they could nothing test like that. what would happen when the mm. nuclear plant melts down. Like They like could test Cuba. that redirecting the laser over to Mar-a-Lago and see what happens. <laughs> Aren't you happy now that your your uh, your college education was able to be put to good use just now? <laughs> yep, yep, many years. Yeah. Many years. <laughs> well, it, it, your your degree is in nuclear physics, right? Well, astrophysics. Astrophysics. So I had to study nuclear physics for two years. But, so you you know nuclear <laughs> physics too? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, everybody in life, their their college comes in handy. At the most unexpected time. Yeah. I mean, mine mine happened because I have a degree in microbiology and I was going to go into medicine, but never did. And Until COVID. When COVID came out, mm -hmm. all of a sudden a little light bulb went on in my head and I, you know, and, and things were starting to tick away again. So. Yeah, no, I, I used to tell my friends about our company, you know, about how we test DNA. We split the DNA and we use primers and probes to glue it back together millions of times to try to detect it for any disease. And all this blah, 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 and the flu and all this stuff. And nobody listened to me. Now, after COVID, everybody was like, hey, aren't you guys doing that thing, testing and stuff? I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean. All of a sudden, when they're worried about dying, they'll listen. Yeah, exactly. Well, you say, you, give me a test? <laughs> you say you'll always get around to using your college education. Uh, and I, I never did because I didn't finish college. So, you know, that's... Uh, that's the story yeah, but I'm you're having. a smart guy, so yeah. you know. Experience is a lot. Well, I mean, it. I'm inquisitive. I'm inquisitive. I've always really, been interested really in things. That. Yeah, yeah. I've always been, and I and I tell people, you know, there are those people who go to college, and uh, you know, I, when they get out of it, I say, did you learn anything? <laughs> you know, because they just learned how to give the answers that the system wanted to hear mm -hmm. back at them, and that was it. You know. But, it, you know, uh, do you have any ability at asking? You know, really, I'm saying that uh, an educated person doesn't know how to give the right answer. He knows how to ask the right question. Yeah. You know, and if you know how you're to ask talking, the right you're question. You're not talking about the Republicans again, are you? No. Why do you always have to bring that up? It's, uh, but you know. Mine. Because they're going to screw things up unless they Let's pass pretend the on this show yeah. that the Republicans don't exist. And Bill, too. <laughs> yeah, really. You know, I mean, yeah. boy, there are people who just hate Phil. God, I get things <laughs> on my Facebook page. Hey, got one, just got one yesterday. Let me see if I can read it to you. Just really, just uh, go, wow. It says, uh, is it possible uh, to stick a cork in Phil? <laughs> After his 30-minute segment every Wednesday has elapsed, once the Gabnet panel discussion begins, Phil tends to take over the rest of the show, pretty much ruining the remainder of the program. Since he's the bet noir of a Gabnet podcast, uh, I'm sure the vast like majority him? of your viewers would much rather listen to Jeff, Charlie, Kevin, Brian, Tony, Paula, Eleven, or even Alan. Alan's jokes may make you sick to your stomach, but they won't make you projectile vomit as Phil does. <laughs> Besides nice. that, he's running up my liquor bill with all the extra drinks I'm consuming while he's on. Great. Great. That's, that's great. 
Somebody's Happy actually Halloween. hated more than me. How about that? The president of the Phil fan club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phil's so lucky. Huh? Phil's so lucky. Why is he so lucky? He has his own fans. He has his own fans. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't get... Alan, huh? Alan had fans for a while. What happened to those guys? Yeah. Come on. Write in more bad stuff about Alan. Come on. I only get a couple of nasty things about Alan. You know. Um, and I don't get any, I, I, and I, you know who gets the worst mail here? Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nobody likes Jeff. I mean, it's just a... Oh, you're joking. Just oh. kidding, Jeff. Of course I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. I, mean, I can Jeff, handle it. Jeff protects me when somebody writes something nasty. He's like, oh, yeah. he's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean... Jews stick together, you know? Yeah. Oh, there we go. See He's got to make a Jew comment. He's got to make a Mar-a-Lago comment, and it's <laughs> like a quota every night at least. Yeah, that's, that's right. Gonna have right. a new drinking game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Or today, oh. finally, Biden said something about his about the papers. Oh. You know, oh, I said. Well, he just said that you know my lawyers are taking care of it, and as soon as we saw that we had him, we turned him in. You know. Right. And, uh, you know, we, uh, I'll wait to see, as he said, I'll wait to see what the, uh, what the people, you know, come up with, the, the, what the people they've gotten to look into this thing say. But that he said, that's all, nothing much happened there, you know. There's no, as he put it, there is no there there, you know, or that that. Smart, or, or, uh, smart answer. Mm -hmm. the, the first story I heard was that the, they're going through the boxes and the lawyers saw that. And they closed the box and they started making calls. So, well, that was a smart thing to do. And sometimes, yeah. you know, sometimes when these things get packed up and a person leaves office, they pack some things up they shouldn't pack up. It's being left to normal office people. Not, you know, the president doesn't go, oh, I want to take that and I want to take that and let's take that. But we do know that the amount that Trump took seems to indicate that he had plans for those papers. Right. You know, and that he had something he wanted to do with them, like sell them to Russia. Mm. You know? He's, he's, he's probably just given to him. He's so stupid. Yeah, I mean, you know, he should have said, uh, here's the things I'm going to take, a letter from Kim Jong-un, this, blah, 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 that, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and a, a lot of times, and, and I don't know, um, uh, Josh isn't here tonight, and usually he's good at explaining this sort of thing, but it's my way of thinking that um, the, um, when, you, when you leave, uh, if you, you give all the stuff to the archives, and then if, let's say, you're opening up the Joe Biden presidential library, you can ask for that stuff, and they can apportion it out as they believe you should get it. You know whether it's some of it's too, you know, too dicey for prime time, uh, and so they 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 do that so that if, if what Trump felt he was doing, I want to save it for my uh, my library. Although, have you, has anybody heard about him starting a presidential library? You have to be able to read. First. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, and and. Uh, you know, fun oh, with great. fun yeah. with Dick and Jane is not a good book. Okay, <laughs> so. he, he, he can't even pick his wife out in a picture. Next yeah, and on the news is this lady in uh, that's suing him for rape in in New York, and and he says she's not my type. And then they got a picture of her and and Marla Maples there, and he picks her out over his ex wife. <laughs> Jesus. Well, that's his MO. He always says, I didn't know that person, and then, then you see pictures of her. Well, him. she's not my type. Yeah, not today. Yeah, not my type. <clears throat> today, she has a few years on her, but, you know, maybe at the time. Of course, right. what's his type? I think it was anything with a pulse, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Absolutely. Anything he could grab. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So... And all the stuff we wouldn't know if he never ran for president. Well, yeah. you know, the reason I hate you bringing him up yeah, is I don't like to forget him. Oh, okay. you know I really would. I brought up the Republicans. I didn't bring up Trump. Tonight. You know, I mean there are lessons to be learned from his presidency, but since people never learn that lesson, far I'll, be it I'll from. I'll try not to bring up Trump anymore. 
Well, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just he still is monopolizing the news. I mean, less so now, finally. You know. You're, 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 you're validating my point. Yeah. If you don't want me to talk about him, don't add into it the reasons why we should. Well, I think the reason we got him as president of the United States is because nobody could shut up about him. Nobody you know, the news react. the news outfits couldn't shut up about him and they made him president of the United States. I don't think he planned to be president when he started running. I don't think he no, I thought he I think he did it for the money. Now you say, Well, how do you, what do you mean you're doing it for the money? If you raise a certain amount of money and then you don't spend a lot of that money, you get to keep it. Really? And most people, most candidates will turn it over to their political party for future campaigns, wow. but you can keep it. It's yours. And uh-huh. so he was looking at it, I think, as a way to make a buck. Yeah. And then when he won, it was kind of like, I thought you could, it was kind of like the movie, the, the, the Broadway play or the movie, The Producers, where do we go wrong? You know, where do we go right, rather? Uh, you know, like, I mean, we did everything to make sure we wouldn't get elected. I grabbed her by the pussy. That, he'll never get elected with that. He, oh, did, yeah. he did every, made every mistake you could make and he still got elected. Mm. What's Happens. that about? The Republicans' M.O. Look at McCarthy. How many votes it took to get the idiot yep. in? Oh well, There's he just he, he just wasn't going to give up. He just you know stuck with it, and eventually, I, well, eventually they were getting worn out. You know, you had somebody you had somebody you interviewed on the show a couple of weeks ago when this was going on, and said, "How many times do you go?" And the guy says, three strikes and you're out." Uh, the guy, the guy from uh, uh, what's his name that now lives in the Philippines. I think yeah, is who he yeah, Rob. Well, no, I asked Rob, him yeah, because Rob he didn't Tom, know what right. was going on, and I said to him, "Let's say you were going out for Speaker of the House, and they took a vote, and they didn't vote for you, right. and then they took another vote, and they didn't vote for you, and then they d- took another vote, and they didn't vote for you. What would you do after the third try?" And he said, "I'd probably just say for the good of the party, I'm out of here," you mm-hmm. know. And uh, I said, well, guess what? It's now up to 14 or whatever it was at that point. Yep, yep. Yeah. The trouble is, is that now he wants things as speaker, and he's holding up the budget. Aren't they putting this Santos on a committee? Are they? Oh, God, I haven't heard that. Two committees? Yeah. What are they? The... uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, One of them is a small business. Something had... Ethics. Oversaw. <laughs> He's in the ethics. Tabs on ethics top of plan. it. Yeah, Bam. Ethics, yeah. <laughs> John Fire. <laughs> you like that? Well, he should be on the he should be on the ethics committee because he knows more about how to breach ethics yeah. than anybody I know. You know. He knows more about business fraud too, so he's really oh, good for that committee. Well, you know, but, I mean. There's a the thing lately. He said that his mother died in the in the tower at 9/11. Yep. And I think New York. No, he didn't say she died. She huh. didn't. He didn't say she died in the tower at 9/11. That she was in the tower. Right. On 9/11. And now it's been proven she wasn't even in the country. She wasn't even in the country. <laughs> it's also. A real obviously, he'll probably he'll probably run for president in 2024. Yeah. I, I, I'll be surprised when I find, I won't be surprised when I find out he's not really gay. You know, I mean, it, it, uh, there were all these lies, just one on top of another. What? I'll, re- I'll read this again. Mm-hmm. High school, he lied on his high school resume, college resume. He lied that he worked at uh, Goldman Sachs and Citicorp. Mm-hmm. 9-11 claims his mother's life. Yeah. Mother fled socialism in Europe. Okay. Grandparents survived the Holocaust. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Lost employees at Pulse nightclub shooting. That was a shoot. The shooting at the. He the lost. Well, he nightclub. lost what at Pulse nightclub shooting? Employees. He lost employees. The employees died at Pulse nightclub in Orlando. What? But they went all the way to Orlando to go to a gay club. Had nonprofit pet charity, <laughs> and claimed to be Jewish. <laughs> Oh, he also wrote bad checks in Brazil or somewhere yeah. where he was oh living for a God. while. And, and, and I mean, it's not like, like the Holocaust or something. You know, there's not like one event. It's like he just like went and got all the big events in the last but, 50 years and just checked them off. But what you don't understand is he is the perfect Republican. 
Right. You know, absolutely. That's their MO. And I mean, it's so amazing to me the way um, uh, what's his name? The Speaker of the House McCarthy Mm. uh, said, uh, oh, well, you know, his people elected him. And Mm. I tend to agree with McCarthy. I think he should stay there and he should be representing his people back in New York. They deserve him because they voted for him. And it's only a small group of people. It's just one congressional district. Let them have to sit there and live with this. Yes, Charlie. I think they have to. Yeah, they didn't really elect him. They elected who they thought he was based right. on his lies. Mm. Well, yeah. well, that shows how gullible they are. If, if Trump know. is allowed to run in 2024, I can't think of a better vice president. I was going to say that, yes. Yeah, at this rate, at the, you see, president. you mentioned Trump again. There you go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he can't help himself. He can't, he can't help himself. Yeah. No, but the thing is, Trump is not going to be running for president again. That I hope you're right. He's just saying he is to try and raise money, money. that he doesn't have to give by, back. It's the only yeah. it's the only thing he's got going. Oh, you know? Boy, I you're right. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if I'll live long enough, but in the, within the next couple of years, you'll see Trump Tower go in, into bankruptcy. You know, so what the hell? You know, we lost our signal for a second here. It just mm. said, oh. yeah, it said we were disconnected and then we were reconnected. So that I was ho- the nerve in Brian's neck reconnecting. Uh, really? How's the nerve doing right now? You all drugged on, up? On the pillow, it's okay. Yeah, and I got to drive to Lodi tomorrow morning. Oh boy. You may able to drive like that? Yeah, I had a pillow last. Uh, a couple days ago, I went, but there's a big project I need to finish up. So, yeah, so I just had my pillow in there, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, they probably look at you as the old man in the office, huh? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I am compared to everybody else. That's all right. Don't don't call me old an old man, or I'll get I'll fire you. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one, huh? Well, I used I take these these interns from like Stanford, and I took a group a couple months ago. And I said, yeah, I've been at this company for almost 19 years now. And the kids are looking at me. These kids are barely 19 years old. <laughs> so anyway, Boy, saw, they must have really thought you were old. I saw yeah. something in back of Jeff, and I thought it was a cat for a moment. And it's actually his wife, Pamela. Yeah. She was doing She's some work. Yeah, there she is. Waving. See? I yeah. went way back. Yeah. Mm. What else is happening in the news? Um, oh, can I can oh. I up just real quick? Yeah. So, somebody was somebody a friend of, from the show who listens all the time. He's asking me about uh, Durst. If you've heard from Durst lately, you know I try to get a hold of Durst every now and then. I'm sitting here. I go. Hey, I'll just FaceTime him. See if I can get him. Mm-hmm. And I never can get him. He never picks oh. up. So I I'm I know he's okay. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, but he's still in the hospital. Uh, and he gets out occasionally to do these things with Willie Brown to kind of raise money for himself. Oh, uh, really? Uh, but outside of that, uh, he's still in the he's still in the hospital. He's still in the nursing home, basically. Nursing. Yeah. I thought his wife said that they were getting him out or something like that a while back on the show. No, no, they were hoping they would, but they oh, haven't yeah. yet. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's a, it's a rough go. Ask uh, Ask Jeff here. Jeff's been there. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you know. Hey, I I only had it a year that you I was in, in therapy. Yeah, he only had a year in therapy. Will's been three years now. Yeah, yeah. three years. You know? Right. And uh, so I, you know, I I try and call him every now and then. I might try him again tomorrow. Uh, but uh, you know, I I'd like to talk to him and see how he's doing. And. Um, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I feel so, I always felt really bad about that, you know. Mm. Life isn't fair. No, mm. life isn't fair. Well. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, so I heard something that was very interesting in a certain way. And then is a bunch of people are working on a way to use 3D uh, CAD system mm-hmm. to, to build houses automatically in other words you don't have to buy the conventional materials and but when you say CAD CAD it was a thing that they used to design architecture and so on 
Yeah. But uh, engineering and, and their computer programs. But right. aren't you thinking maybe more of uh, 3D printing? Yeah. 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 You can call it that. Yeah. They're using some kind of a combination uh, material and they have a big uh, injecting uh, equipment and they squirt out all of this uh, multiple material. And then they shape it around and create mm. a house. Yeah. yeah there's, there's videos on YouTube. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, what are they using, Charlie? 3D printing? I don't know exactly. They're using 3D printers, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, what that's what they're claiming. Because yeah. I saw where a, a while back they were looking into using 3D printing to make body parts. Yeah. You know. Well, that would be okay. Well, yeah. What, what did Pamela say? Like prostheses. Like yeah. Hands. Your hands and things like that. Yeah. But I mean, uh, uh, you know, there's no telling what they can do with a lot of the science that they have. Only thing is, I brought up this question once before. Why didn't we invent this in 1700? <laughs> what, what is the evolution of life such that we only make these incremental changes that somehow, I mean, Let's put it this way. All the components you have in a television set, mm -hmm. right, existed on this planet in the 1700s, all right? Would you Technology. agree with that? It, it, we, we didn't know how to piece them together to make them do something, but it was all there. Why is it that we couldn't do a lot of this stuff early on in the history of man? Why is it only now that we've come to this point, you know? Baby steps. Baby steps? Yeah. Okay. Same thing, with, same thing with science, same thing with medicine. It takes time. They didn't even know luck, what the electricity was in 1700. Yeah, well, I'm saying that, you know, I mean, but didn't people like walk across a rug and get static electricity? Probably. No. Yeah. So didn't somebody say, hey, you know, we could turn that into something that would do this? And Franklin did that. That's that's the smart guy. Well, that's the the creative brain. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, you know, I mean, like all of a sudden, Newton's a big guy because he realized that there was a thing called gravity. Mm -hmm. But today, he probably just be considered an average guy. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> you know? I mean, could Newton keep up with what's going on today? I don't. I don't know if he could. You know. It's like it's like how many people give credit to Nikola Tesla. Uh, yeah. Everything we're doing right now is based on him. Electricity, uh, alternating current, a lot of, he did a lot. He yeah, but the only thing I didn't like about him is he named himself after a car. And I thought that that was, you know, that was wrong. That was just yeah, wrong, you, you know. Yeah. Um, it just, somebody the other day said to me, all those DC motors on Teslas work really good at driving the wheels. I said, they're not DC motors, they're AC motors. It's, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. The car's battery powered. Yeah, but they convert it to alternating yeah. current. Do they really? Okay. Why, yeah, why would they call it Tesla? Why wouldn't they call yeah. it something different? No, but Tesla came up, oh yeah, Tesla came up with alternating current. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they could have called it Edsel. Well, the thing yeah, was, really the thing Edison. was, he started out working for Edison, and uh, he tried to yep. sell Edison on on alternating current, on this yep. concept of alternating yep. current, and uh, Edison didn't want any part of it. His whole thing was direct current, and he was right. going to, you know, the only problem with direct current was if you if you build a power station, you could only go like ten miles with direct current, yeah. where you could go a hundred miles with, with alternating yeah. current. So but that was the that was the feature because then he could have power stations all over the place and make tons of money. Oh, yep. oh so that's the reason why Edison didn't <laughs> want it. Yeah. I'm sure it was something. The, like the, that. the thickness of the cable to handle, say, a thousand volts of electricity in direct current in DC is many, many more times thick. You know, many, many more yeah. times. It, it, you know, to to make it in and and to carry that same amount of voltage. Than alternating current. I mean, alternating current as it works out, thanks to Tesla, is really good. 
Yeah, well, I mean, but the point was that he finally had to leave Edison to yeah, go yeah. You do, uh, do um, uh, uh, alternating the, current. Which, the motors, the which, motors that we use today, yeah. garbage disposals, all of them, induction motors. Yeah. Tesla invented them. They all work on alternating current. Yeah, yeah. So he went and he, I can't remember who backed him. I think Westinghouse backed him. Yep. Uh, and he uh, he went ahead with the alternating current, and it became the standard. And uh, you know, the interesting uh, thing is Westinghouse almost went broke, and they owed Tesla millions of dollars in 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 stocks and stuff. And in order to keep the company alive, Tesla gave away his stock options and everything, and died a poor man. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. he would have been much richer. Well, he was a man of great vision. Absolutely. Just like the man who invented television who never got credit for it. Yeah. In, yeah. in fact, his old office is in San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, what was his name? Um, Alex Bennett? No. 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 <laughs> Does anybody remember the name? Television invented by... I, oh. I, yeah, I, ha I used to have the name. Um, see, my brain doesn't function like it used to. Who yeah. invented television? Who... Invented, invented television. Uh, 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 you know something. But by the time I even Not bring Marconi. it, up, no, no, mm -hmm. no. He was able to send the first signal uh, across the the globe. Yeah. You know, some kind of wireless signal. You know, radio signal, and got credit for it after he used seventeen of. Uh, okay. Tesla's patents to make it happen. Okay, here it is. Philo T. Farnsworth. There you go. You're kidding. He came uh, up he yeah. came, when he was a kid, when he was 16. He invented television when he was 16 years old. Well, here's how he invented it. He worked at his father owned a farm. And they would go out, and one day he was plowing the fields. And he noticed he would plow one trench, and then he'd turn around and plow the other trench, another trench, another trench. And he came up with the idea that maybe we could transmit pictures this way by just doing it in lines. And he came up with the first practical concept of how you do that. And, um, uh, but never, he, what happened was Sarnoff, David Sarnoff came along and stole it from him, basically. And because he had all the power of RCA behind him and everything like that, Philo T. Farnsworth was left by the side of the road. And a few uh. years ago, they came back and they awarded Philo T. Farnsworth the credit for having invented television. But, you know, another case of, of, uh, of you know, like uh, Nikola, Nikola Tesla, you know. Um, what happened to Charlie? Where's Charlie? I don't know. I just sent him a text. We lost you. I don't know if he, if his internet went down. Weather's okay in 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 uh, in Texas. Yeah. yeah, deep in the heart of. Yeah, it was eighty six yesterday or yeah. something like that. But anyway, you know. So um, um, otherwise, I've been going out at all, and I'm getting. I get very tired. I get up. I'm dizzy and. I'm lying down too much, and I got to get out. But then, if I say if I go out, where do I go? Where what? Where is there to see? So a lot of you know when you're dizzy, a lot of times if they can't find a problem, hydration is important and getting up slowly is important because a lot of pills that we take us older folks um, uh, cause can cause dizziness, and your body doesn't metabolize drugs and other things as well. The older you get. Yeah, well, so, you know, I mean, uh, my friend Shecky was taking all these pills. Then one day he decided not to take them anymore. Just stop taking all his pills. I've been thinking uh, about doing the same thing myself because I'm wondering how much good they really do me. You know? Yeah, I mean, they keep my uh, my <coughs> my Why cholesterol you down. Huh? Why don't you ask your doctor? Oh, my doctor will say keep taking them because yeah. giving, mm -hmm. giving you pills is the easiest way to solve your problem. You know? Instead of saying, hey, eat eat better, eat healthier, they say, here, this will help you with your cholesterol. Well, maybe eating better would clear up the cholesterol, but that means you're going to have to do some work. And you don't want to hear that, so give me the goddamn pill, and my cholesterol will be super for the rest of my life. 
you know, I don't know the pills are the answer. I you know, either. I mean, I got to point, I would, was taking one pill. I think it was a cholesterol about, pill. And before about, I knew it, I looked, I got, I'm taking seven pills a day now. Think about in the 1700s where you brought up earlier, you know, without pills and modern medicine, people didn't live very long. 30, 40 years was a long mm -hmm. life. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Instead, I'm living to be 83 and every bone in my body aches. If I died at 40, I wouldn't feel this way. You know? So... Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you uh, my list of uh, exercise that you should do for yourself. Exercise? Yeah, there you go. Jeff, get them out when you go. You get actually do the exercise? Well, I think, I think, I think one of my problems with the dizziness, I have a thing called um, uh, uh, vertigo. vertigo. Positional, uh, pos positional vertigo. Positional vertigo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and what it what it is really, folks, is just that your inner ear has all these crystals, and they come loose, and then they wobble around, and you mm -hmm. are lightheaded when you get up and walk around. You know, yeah, you know? surgery they can get in there and clear those crystals out. Yeah. yeah. What, what what did Pamela say? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Pam, my son had. Yeah, David had that, and they put him on. I don't know, they did some kind of a, like a PT thing where they put him on this rack and like turned him upside down. Oh, good, head. good. Yeah, oh. really, I want that. That's going to make no, me No, but it got him, it got, he got better. Well, no, yeah. the thing is that I, I know those those exercises and I can't, I, they went away for a while. I wasn't feeling lightheaded and now I am again. So I probably got to do the, the exercises yeah, again. Yeah. The but what it is, is you get this, like, people, you get these little crystals that come loose that are in wow. your ear and they float around the air canal and they throw you off balance. So now what you gotta do is you gotta lie there and you gotta go like this and then you gotta go like exactly. that. You know, right. and, uh, and, and get them so they will go back into place. But That's you have right. to keep doing that every day. That's and right. I did it for a while and it did start to go away, but now it's come back again, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jeff's son, he went, I think like three or four times, he went to like a therapist and then it was better. Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, my doctor yeah, said has like, given me the, those exercises, but I think they did something a little more. Yeah, you know, my doctor has told fast me to go talk to these therapists to do that. You know, yeah, but he did te he did test me, and I do have positional vertigo. You know, because what happens? They do something with your eyes, and if your eyes twitch, right. it it uh, indicates that you have positional vertigo. So, but <laughs> these are all these. Yeah, you know, these are all men stuff you know i'm 83 yeah. if that's all that i don't know if their son wasn't yeah. that old yeah no uh david was uh, in his 50s. 50s at the time yeah and today i had bad breathing problems and then i looked i have this uh, i have an air purifier and it has a light on it that's usually blue but it can go yeah, green it and it can go yellow and then it goes red if it's really having to work at getting purifying the air it was red for hours, literally for hours. And my breathing was labored somewhat. Is there a filter in there or anything? Y yeah, or there's a filter in there, but I mean, it, 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 and then all of a sudden it got better and it went back to blue. But wow. there was something in, there's something in the air in this apartment, in this apartment house, yeah. just terrible. And well, aren't they uh, working on the outside of the yeah, that's building? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the whatever's driving you nuts was developed in the 1700s. What? I said whatever's driving you nuts was ever causing these problems. Cement was developed in the in the 1900s and they're 1700s whatever. I was trying to make a joke out of this. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah, when you get it, it perfected, it when you get perfected, call us again and let me know what it is, <laughs> okay? It didn't work. You know, if you have to explain them, it's not worth telling. It's my old <laughs> axiom. Uh, but anyway, so um, you know, I mean, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I'm too, I think I'm taking too, taking too many pills. I don't like taking seven pills every night before I go to bed. Why? You know. And and my doctor never sits down with me and goes, "What are we taking now?" Oh, well, you don't need that one anymore, and you don't need that one anymore, and you don't need that one anymore. Why don't you hey, ask That them? doctor wants me to take more pills. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I have one. Why don't one... you ask them what ones you can take, get away with that won't be life-threatening for 
for you. Yeah. Well, none of them are life-threatening. I mean, wow. if I stopped taking them, you're saying, which ones right. would be life-threatening if right. I weren't taking and, them? And the ones that aren't, then maybe... Well, you, you know, know, I mean, they're going to tell you that, uh, for instance, cholesterol pills are really a godsend in a way, the statins. Uh, I had a doctor who said, uh, you know, if he had a kid these days, he'd start giving the kid statins at eight, you <laughs> know, that they can keep your heart from going bad on you. Well, they you keep know. the cholesterol that builds up in your blood veins. Yeah, control. yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't think I have any cholesterol problems, but, you know, my cholesterol is fine. One and time it shot statins, way up oh. and all of a sudden I realized that I had mistakenly not taken the pill for a month. And I oh. went to the doctor at my doctor's appointment and all of a sudden he said, man, your cholesterol went crazy and you're taking the cholesterol medicine. Oh, and I thought like, about it. Yeah, right, and you go, got it, I thought huh? about it and I went, you know something? I think I forgot to take it that month. You know, I mean, I lay out <laughs> all the pills and everything and I forgot oh, yeah. to place that one in there, so. My cholesterol immediately jumped. So that's what happens when, when you don't take your cholesterol mm -hmm. medicine. But that stuff's pretty good because that's that has saved lives, you know? So Ooh. So do blood pressure medicine. Yeah. Do you take blood oh, you must God. take blood pressure medicine. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably be dead if I hadn't taken right. blood pressure medicine. I take blood pressure medicine and I take a statin. Lipitor. Lipitor? Yeah. Uh I take Rovastatin. <clears throat> Uh, li lip the Lipitor, Lipitor, uh, lip Lipitor did not affect me nicely. Really? Yeah, uh -huh. I had negative effects to it. So, uh -huh. you know, um, so I, I got my I got my little pill, my little Rovastat, you know, and I take my Cialis every day to help me to pee because of my, you know, those problems. Yep. And um, I don't know what else is there. I guess, I, you know, you I, are there, so there are seven, uh, uh, six or seven <clears throat> pills that I take. And then I add to that <clears throat> uh, vitamin E and vitamin C and a bunch of other vitamins that I take too, so. 14 pills every day. You, 14, 14 pills for you? Yeah. Are those all prescription or does that include uh, like vitamins <clears throat> and stuff? Well, one of the pills is vitamins. A one. So 13 prescriptions. Well, because you got all that problem with diabetes, too. Diabetes yeah. and rheumatoid arthritis. Welcome to our new show called What's Wrong With You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. High blood pressure. Who's got the I most got pills? <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's I a found, science. I found the cheap way to buy them. Costco. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Very cheap. Anyway, there's the music. And uh, Jack, hopefully, will get a show on the air tonight. I'm, I'm hoping. Oh, okay. I really am hoping because I've, I've worked very hard at this. Okay, I was on on the line with him for about an hour today, testing this whole thing to make sure it would work. It's a new piece of equipment he installed that wasn't working right last night. Anyway, hey guys, good, good talking to you. Hopefully, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Jeff, good talking to you. Yeah. Charlie, good talking to you. Alex, good talking to you. Well, that would, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Brian, good talking to you. And Alan, good talking to you. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. And I will uh, give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. Yes. Okay. So, what does it all amount to, folks? What have we proved tonight? Nothing in particular. Have we solved any world problems? Nah. We haven't done any of that. Uh, but we had a nice time just kind of talking and chatting and it seems like you people enjoy joining us and uh, uh, turning us on as well and enjoying our little talk we'll see you again when is it uh, oh hey yeah tomorrow night last show of the week our Friday night special <laughs> and uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next he'll be here with the intersection okay He'll be here with the intersection, and he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. In the meantime, I will see you all again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.